Okay, Dave, so we've been riding the northern part of the tat the last couple of days. Yep. Uh, I've been wearing the linesman jacket mm -hmm. and you've been wearing the um, waterproof shell. Yep. Uh, now it's, it's been a long time in production. We've been waiting for it. It was very exciting to see you wear it. Yep. Um, and it's pretty much ready to go now. It is, finally. Could you talk us through it? Um, yeah, you know, sure. How does it perform and maybe some of the um, features and, and why it was constructed that way? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I'm lucky enough to have been wearing one of these for nearly two years, as people who've been following the photographs will know. But um, we, we've been really wary about releasing the garment um, until we had it absolutely right, because we don't want people, you know, we don't, we, we, re we recognize that people put a, buy a garment like this to protect them in really inclement weather in, in very dangerous situations sometimes. And so we couldn't, you know, we didn't, we weren't prepared to compromise on, on the quality of the outcome at all. So we're now confident that we're ready to go to market. And in fact, I think as we sit here today, there's somebody cutting pieces of material in a factory, which is exciting. Um, the the idea really uh, is based around a simple lightweight trail riding shell, uh, which seems very, very simplistic. And in fact, in theory, it is very simplistic. It's a waterproof shell that you put on over your other garments um, in order to keep you dry and warm and protected when you ride. But in reality, when you break that down into its constituent parts, it becomes far more problematic than you imagine, uh, certainly than we imagined anyway. So there are lots of issues first of all the material that you want to make the garment from um, nobody really makes material specifically for motorcycling garments because in truth there aren't enough um, motorcycling garments sold worldwide for even some of the big international corporations to make a breathable membrane specifically for motorcycles um, or make a fabric that's going to sell in volumes that this garment's going to sell in relatively small um, to make it worthwhile for them Whereas we came at it from a perspective of, well, we're going to do this. We're going to make exactly what we want and how we want it. So we had to start by manufacturing the face fabric that you see on the outside of the garment. Um, and we manufactured that from um, a product called a Nylon 6.6. It's, it's the toughest form of nylon. But we didn't want it to be bulky and we didn't want it to be rigid. So we manufactured it from a 210 denier um, fabric and we made it a ripstop. Now that fabric, to, to our knowledge, isn't something, it's not something that's used in garments for motorcycling. It's not really used in luggage. It's a really bizarre size and weight of fabric, but that's what we wanted. But then what you don't realize is then you have to choose a, a, a waterproof membrane, which essentially gets stuck to the face fabric. And again, we had a, an issue with that because the membranes that were available to us had interesting characteristics, but on a motorcycle, what you really want is something that's really tough and it's going to be incredibly waterproof and breathability is important but for me not possibly as important as the waterproofing aspects of things and you can't have you can't have something that's amazingly breathable amazingly waterproof and amazingly tough you have to compromise somewhere we wanted something which was super waterproof and super tough and so um, we chose those two and focused on those and that again is an unusual choice so we had to go to a factory in Japan who manufactured the membrane. It went back to the material factory in Korea and they laminated the two together. And then we had two layers of fabric. And then we have to have another layer on the inside, which then protects the membrane. So then that got stuck. So then we have a three layer laminated fabric. Um, and at that point we had the base material. Then we had to worry about putting it together into the garments and that's the body fabric. Then, of course, we're on a motorbike, so we know that it has to be abrasion resistant. This is a great body fabric. It has some useful characteristics now, but we all know what happens when you fall off motorbikes. Um, and we all know that there's a continuum there. In theory, we'd all like to ride around in a suit of armor because then we'd be protected from everything whenever we crashed. But in reality, we couldn't move. And we want something that's ideal as part of a layering system for trail riding, which means when we trail ride, as again we saw yesterday, we're flailing everywhere, we're falling off, we're crawling around, we're pushing, we're pulling, we're dragging. We don't want to be encumbered by something big and heavy and restrictive. But we do want the capability to be protected if we do fall off on tarmac or on rough gravel surfaces. So again, we went back to the drawing board and we created uh, this fabric here, which is a little bit unusual. It is a um, 
it's almost a three-dimensional fabric. If you feel it, it feels rough to the touch. And that's because the raised pieces of it are actually Kevlar. And Kevlar is used for bulletproof vests and is used uh, in motorcycling industry often for jeans. It gives amazing abrasion resistance, but it keeps very flexible. And so we, we use this particular material. We weave Kevlar into the shoulders and high abrasion and hip areas. And then once we'd created this material, we went back to the process of laminating at the back, putting our breathable membrane on it and then our scrim on the inside. So we have three layer material for this. And then when we'd finally created our palette of materials, it was time to start making the jacket. So it's a very long winded process. And is that material, it's slightly different to what's on my linesman jacket or is it exactly the same? No, it's, it is different, although the principle is the same. So what we discovered when we did abrasion tests, um, and, and it kind of makes perfect sense when you think about it, is if you have a material which is not a flat surface, if you have a material which, which has a raised element to it, when you impact the ground, the raised element will, will begin to abrade first. And so if you raise an area and you make sure the raised areas are Kevlar, that almost means you kind of have two attempts at stopping, um, at stopping the road sort of getting through to you. First of all, the raised Kevlar area takes the initial levels of abrasion and then slowly it works its way down through to the, to the fabrics and the yarns underneath, which are also very tough, but they are actually protected, if you like, by this, by this Kevlar shield. Okay, okay. Um, and in terms of features of, of the waterproof jacket, so you mentioned that, um, I mean, the interesting challenge for trail riding is that you have sections on the road where you might be getting cold and then sections when you're trail riding and you are actually, your body temperature is rising and you're getting hot. Yeah, totally. Um, so you, there, there are vents, aren't there, to help with that? Yeah, so the idea is it's super light and it's super comfortable and gives amazing freedom of movement. So that's really important. But also temperature control, I mean, is almost impossible when you trail ride. You'll go from a point where you're struggling up, uh, up a technical section and you will literally think that you're going to explode with heat. You sweat profusely and then two minutes later you drop onto a road section and you're doing 60 miles an hour and the wind chill can be bitter. So we have to be able to transition between those two things. So we have, we have a big pit zip underneath here. So if we're actually on a technical section, if, you, if you're smart enough, which I never am, you start at the beginning by opening your pit zip to enable some airflow to get through when you're on the technical sections. And the idea then being what you do is when you get to the end of your technical section, you're starting to move more quickly and the wind chills affecting you zip up again. In reality, what always happens to me is I forget, I forget to open it. I do the technical section, I overheat, and then I open it when I go riding in between. So, but there is variable venting here and you can choose, uh, there's two zip ends, so you can choose how large the aperture is and where it sits. And that helps to, um, that helps to control that. Okay. okay, the other approach that Adventure Spec have taken to the, the whole range really is this idea that we're creating trail riding clothing and trail riding involves riding and then it often involves getting off the bike setting up camp and spending time around a campfire and and basically exploring um and you, the bike is a means to get from a to b uh, but when you're at a or at b there are things to do so this is essentially also needs to work as um not a, not a leisure jacket but it needs to work around a campfire and, and one of the most obvious things that i can see on this is that it's got a hood yeah, so that's totally true, isn't it? So, I mean, when, uh, when modern technology arrived in uh, long distance trail riding, you have the little thing in your GPS and you can choose all your settings. And one of the settings is, how long have you spent moving today? And it always used to horrify me that I'd get up at some awful hour in the morning and seemingly ride all day. And then when I looked at this thing, it would tell me that today you've been riding for five hours, 25 minutes. And you realize that for, when you trail ride for 19 hours a day, you're actually walking around off the bike doing stuff, whether that's fixing a puncture or shopping or going to look at something. Or The reality of trail riding is that you spend more time off the bike than on the bike. And when you're technical trail riding, also the reality is what you don't want is a separate set of clothing. You don't want a heavy jacket. You don't want something that you've then got to leave somehow chained to your bike or try and stash somewhere in a pannier system that you don't really want to have because it'll get smashed up when you try and do technical trails. What you want is one clothing system that you put on at the beginning of the day and is comfortable and is wearable when you ride and when you don't ride. And it has to be something that can be used for both. So yeah, the, the hood thing uh, is definitely a reality and a necessity really when you're off the bike. You never know when it's gonna rain, when you're gonna be cold, when you're gonna need that head protection. And so every jacket that I ever took with me on a trip that wasn't my riding jacket always had a hood. But you can never ride that on a bike because when you ride, it inflates behind you and you kind of, it, you have this huge. So 
how do we how do we get around that challenge and the answer is well we make a hood that's really super tight and actually wraps up inside the collar so it doesn't look as if this jacket has a hood but it does and it's tightly just nicely neatly wrapped up in the collar and when i need it i can take that hood out and i can use it as a hooded jacket to go wandering around it, it, i don't look like a spaceman in this it's not it's not really heavy it's not uncomfortable i can just throw this on i can take the dog for a walk if i want i can go i can go climbing up a mountain in it it's not that much different to many other standards of jackets and it had this and it has this hood however one concession we did make uh, to the hood was we didn't put a long peak on it and we didn't put a long peak on it deliberately because what actually happens if the weather is really horrendous and you've got a really stinking long ride to do um, in awful weather is that you can put your hood up you then put the helmet on over the top of the hood which because it's cut short doesn't affect the aperture here and what you end up with is a perfectly sealed shoulders neck hood and all you end up with is a small hole here that you can actually see through your the front of your lid and there's no ability there's no way water can then get down the sides of your neck or down your back it seals you in and so it, it kind of plays two games it enables you to have an almost completely waterproof shell when you're riding distance in really cold weather it means you can have a hood when you're sat around the campfire or walking and it also means that in standard use you can pack it away like this and it doesn't impede you in any way i think it's great i i think you can really tell that i know you personally have um, spent a lot of time in the outdoors before motorcycling kind of mountaineering yeah. um climbing yeah. and i think the, the whole gear but this especially has definitely got its roots in that kind of outdoors approach really it, 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 it would very much kind of sit on a rack at your local mountaineering shop um, albeit with the extra protection that motorcyclists need so is that something you've you've thought of consciously or has it just come from your experiences yeah i'm not sure i've thought of it i'm not sure it's a conscious de decision i guess it was in a way but it's hard to know what influences that you know I, i've spent a lot of time bike packing on push bikes and climbing ultra lightweight in pretty remote areas of the world and doing and long distance sailing and doing all kinds of different things spend a lot of time in the outdoors and what eventually you know in your mind you come up with is it needs to be light it needs to be it needs to last it needs to be functional it needs to be simple um and i it's hard to separate my experiences of my previous activities that i've spent a long time doing from this process i guess it's a part of it's a part of the experience of those of us in adventure spec who've worked uh, the design team have worked on this almost all of whom have extensive experience of skiing the outdoor world long distance motorcycle trips um so i guess it's a it's a culmination of all that experience really whether we'd like to say it is or it isn't you can't separate that experience from what you end up with